whether traditional medicine and modern medicine can coexist. Why do we think it is an alternate? It is not alternate, it is part of it. I deal with treating breast cancer patients on a daily basis. Cancer is not really a disease, but a certain malfunction of our own system that it throws up. Whether traditional medicine and modern medicine can coexist because I deal with treating breast cancer patients on a daily basis and I get patients who have already commenced alternative treatment before coming to me and they are very fearful to even express that they are on those kind of treatments and I'm not against them using uh, alternative treatment. I sit them down, I counsel them, I explain what they have and I say that as long as you're able to take the allopathic treatment based on the multidisciplinary protocols, I have absolutely no issues in your continuing the alternative treatment. But there is a view that alternative treatment should not be taken in those who have cancer, which I totally disagree. I feel that as long as they're able to take allopathic medicine in the way that they should and also parallelly use alternative medicine, I have no issues. So do you think traditional medicine and modern medicine can coexist? See, uh, essentially what you're asking is, whatever knowledge and insights we have gleaned out of thousands of years of experience, of life upon this planet. Should we keep it simply because a new force has come into play? Should we throw out all that and just go by the new things we have discovered in the last 150 years? No, this is… this is not the way to approach life. Why do we think it is an alternate? It is not alternate, it is part of it. Tell me if I am wrong. The yogic understanding of cancer is like this, that cancer is not really a disease, but a certain malfunction of our own system that it throws up. What is already there in our body concentrates itself. We… I would describe it like this. In a city, if there are ten pickpockets, you know, in every city there are, there is a little bit of crime, somebody is picking somebody's pocket, something burglary is happening, whatever. Uh, we deal with it in a certain way and keep going. But suppose these ten people got very organized and they built a, a team of one thousand people and became an organized crime and everybody's pocket is being picked tomorrow morning, then we will say we need to act in a serious way. This is how we understand cancer. There are cancerous cells in our body, there are cells which have gone rogue in our system, they're always there. But we don't care because they don't really affect us, we just manage them. Managing them, there are many, many systems in the traditional system of medicine where you can manage them below a certain level. For some re reason, either because of ex external stimuli or genetic stimuli or whatever else, somehow it gets triggered and they become organized crime. When they become organized crime, you will say, this is a cancer has established in the body. But nobody can say cancerous cells were not in the body. Probably even a just-born infant has, I don't know, you must tell me. Even a just-born infant may have cancerous cells. Will it get organized or not? To keep them disorganized, there are many systems in yoga and Ayurveda that if you do certain things, they will keep them disorganized. But now they've already gotten organized. See, when it was disorganized to handle a pickpocket, a police constable who is little alert is good enough. If five of them get organized, then a sub-inspector will handle it. But suppose thousand of them got organized, then you need national security, all right? So, this is how I look at cancer. If it is gotten so organized that something is rotting in your system already, now it needs a different level of intervention, which is what allopathic medical intervention is. But at the same time, even if that is happening, should still the constable on the street be alert? I think he should be. Yes.